The legend of Atlantis, the fabled sunken civilization, has stirred human imagination for countless generations, inspiring explorers, scholars, and dreamers alike. There is something hauntingly powerful in the idea of a great and prosperous world, lost forever beneath the waves. What makes the story even more compelling is that the date of Atlantis's destruction, as given by the ancient Greek philosopher Plato, curiously coincides with a real and dramatic global catastrophe about 11,600 years ago. Whether this is a mere coincidence or a clue to a forgotten chapter of history is difficult to say. Yet the scientific evidence for the events of that era is nothing short of astonishing. Plato, one of the most influential thinkers of the 4th century BCE, student of Socrates, teacher of Aristotle, was not a storyteller for entertainment's sake. His works often fused philosophy, history, and moral lessons into intricate dialogues. It is in two of these dialogues, Timaeus and Critias, that we first encounter the tale of Atlantis. According to Plato, Atlantis was no mere island but a powerful maritime empire, advanced in technology, rich in resources, and formidable in its influence. Yet, in a single day and night of misfortune, it vanished, swallowed by the sea. Plato claimed that the source of this story came from Egyptian priests, who told the Athenian statesman Solon that Atlantis had met its fate 9,000 years before their time. This places the event around 9,600 BCE, more than 11 and a half millennia ago. And here lies the intriguing twist. Modern geology confirms that around this same period, Earth experienced a sudden and extraordinary transformation. Roughly 11,600 years ago, the final chapter of the last ice age was closing. The Younger Dryas, a millennium-long cold snap that had gripped the planet, ended abruptly. After centuries of icy conditions, temperatures surged to near-modern levels within just a few decades, a rate of change almost unimaginable in natural climate history. This marked the beginning of the Holocene, the warm interglacial period in which we still live today. The scale of these changes was staggering. Massive ice sheets, which for tens of thousands of years had covered vast portions of North America, Europe, and Asia, began melting at a breathtaking pace. Global temperatures rose by several degrees in the blink of a geological eye. Sea levels climbed by about 120 meters, flooding an estimated 10 million square kilometers of land, an area roughly equivalent to modern Europe and China combined. Coastal plains and river valleys became seabeds, ancient shorelines were erased. The natural world reeled under the impact. Entire ecosystems collapsed. Up to three quarters of the planet's large ice age animals, the so-called megafauna, disappeared forever. Mammoths, woolly rhinoceroses, saber-toothed cats, giant ground sloths, once dominant in their habitats, faded into extinction. For early humans, this was not an abstract change. It was a shift in the very fabric of daily life, reshaping hunting grounds, food sources, and migration routes. The uncanny alignment between Plato's timeline and these global upheavals has fueled generations of speculation. Could the story of Atlantis be a distant cultural echo of real events? A memory of the floods, earthquakes, and vanishing lands that marked the end of the Ice Age? Many researchers think it possible. After all, Stories of a great deluge appear in cultures across the world. The biblical tale of Noah, the Sumerian epic of Gilgamesh, the Indian myth of Manu, and flood legends among Native American tribes. Such parallels suggest that the trauma of these events was etched deeply into humanity's collective memory, later woven into myth and preserved through centuries of oral tradition. Scientists, too, debate the causes of these abrupt changes. One dramatic hypothesis is that Earth suffered a cosmic strike, fragments of a giant comet or asteroid colliding with the planet around 12,800 years ago. Such an impact could have ignited vast wildfires, triggered earthquakes, and sent shockwaves through the atmosphere. The disruption may have fractured sections of ice sheets, sending torrents of meltwater into the oceans and altering global currents, plunging the world into the Younger Dryas cold spell before it rebounded. Others argue that the explanation lies in the ice itself. Enormous glacial lakes, held in check by fragile ice dams, dotted the continents. When these dams failed, sometimes catastrophically, 
unimaginable volumes of freshwater poured into the seas. The sudden release of Lake Agassiz in North America, for example, is believed to have dramatically disrupted the Atlantic circulation system, altering climate patterns worldwide. In addition to these massive events, there were countless regional cataclysms. Geologists have found evidence of colossal floods reshaping landscapes. In the Pacific Northwest of the United States, the Missoula floods repeatedly scoured the land when a giant ice-bound lake burst through its barriers. Such events, magnified by human retellings over millennia, could easily have fed into the universal archetype of the world-ending flood. And so we are left with the question. Atlantis, was it a poetic metaphor? A philosopher's allegory about hubris and downfall? Or a dim recollection of an actual, thriving civilization swept away by forces beyond its control? The mainstream scholarly view leans toward myth. No direct archaeological proof has been uncovered for a 12,000-year-old advanced society beneath the ocean. Yet, the convergence of Plato's account with the most dramatic natural events in recent geological history is hard to ignore. Today, with satellites, oceanography, and archaeological science, we are better equipped than ever to search for the truth behind such stories. The idea that entire lands, perhaps even centers of culture and knowledge, could have vanished under rising seas is no longer unthinkable. And if Atlantis is not literal, it may still be a timeless symbol, a reminder of how fragile civilizations are in the face of nature's power. One location has captured the attention of both scientists and adventurers, the Rishit structure in Mauritania, known as the Eye of the Sahara. This immense geological formation, a vast set of concentric rings visible from space, has inspired theories ranging from natural erosion patterns to ancient engineering marvels. Some have even speculated that its size, shape, and apparent traces of ancient waterways could connect it to the Atlantis legend. This October, we will journey to the Eye of the Sahara once more. We will walk its rings, follow the lines of old channels, study the marks left by ancient water, and document every find with the tools of modern exploration. We go not just as travelers, but as investigators of a mystery that straddles the boundary between science and legend. If you have ever felt the pull of an unanswered question, if the thought of standing where human history may have taken one of its great turns excites you, then this is your call. Join us and step into a story that began long before recorded history. The eye of the Sahara awaits, silent, vast, and patient, for those ready to seek answers where the tale of our civilization may have begun.